all again. It's wonderful to see you. I'd like to take some time to show you some extremely beautiful books that I own. These books are both belong to the Disney Fairy Collection, and they're Disney Fairy books came out in 2005, and even though I was, well, <laughs> a little old for the target audience, I knew that I had to have them because, as an artist, I'm extremely attracted to beautiful illustration, and the illustration in these books is so wonderful and so beautiful. The illustration As you can see, there's a lovely illustration on the inside cover of Tinkerbell, and another fairy too, and Mother Dove. I'll read you the summary now of the book. Brilla, the newest fairy to arrive in Neverland, is so odd. more like a clumsy than a self-respecting ever fairy should. To make matters worse, Brilla doesn't know what her talent is, or if she has a talent at all. Mother Dove, the wisest creature in Neverland, thinks Brilla has a talent, but even she isn't certain. A diabolical hurricane, a selfish fairy, Captain Hook, snobby mermaids, a fierce golden hawk, and the evil dragon Kaito combine in a tantalizing elixir that tests Mother Dove's wisdom, Tink's courage, and Brilla's metal. Even clumsy children on the mainland, even readers wherever they may be, play a crucial role in deciding Here we have Tinkerbell with a little balloon that looks like it's been burst with a string. And as you can see, I don't like to write in my books. Even if it says this book belongs to, I don't like to write my name in them. I guess I'm a weirdo like that. Fairy dust and the quest for the egg. And here's Tinkerbell carrying her balloon. of fairies in the tree. David's illustrations in this book are so whimsical, so beautiful. For the most part, as much as I can tell, they're all done in watercolor, although I'm sure they've been altered a little bit in Photoshop because everything is these days. This is kind 
kind of an interesting feature of these two books. All the time in the books, you'll find pull-out pages. Little secret pull-out pages that are exciting to discover. That feature very beautiful illustrations that are fun to pull out and look at in detail. Another dual page full illustration. And find a couple of my favorites. I love this one so much. So beautiful. These illustrations really appeal to both kids and adults alike because they're so powerful even though they're like very whimsical, right? They bring a certain nostalgia. Captain Hook sleeping. A beautiful box. Mother Dove feeling quite ill. And here's Mother Dove with the egg falling. I would love to know all of the different mixed media used in these pieces. I mean, it's very obviously watercolor in some parts, but obviously for the line work, other things have been used. I'd be very interested to find out, although I'm sure I never will. all the mermaids sinking into the depths of the sea through the use of watercolor. Mermaids are probably my favorite mythological creatures. Even more than fairies, I love them. A fox staring at Mother Dove. And now I don't want to spoil this too much for you in case you do want to read it. These books are written for children, but I think that they're really sweet to read and even more sweet to share with a child. So if you have a child in your life that you like to read with, this would be a great book for you to share with them. The second book in the series is called Fairy Haven and the Quest for the Wand, and it features all the same characters from the first book that we once again, illustrated by David Christiana, and the same author as the last time, Gail Carson Levine. Beautiful fish illustration here. Before we get too deep into it, I want to show you again. Cover. Tinkerbell looking at the wands. I love, love, love when dust covers for books are different than the actual book itself. It's almost like a little secret that you share with the book. Because only you know what it really looks like on the inside. When I was a little girl, I used to take the dust covers off of all of my books because I didn't understand that they were there to protect the book. It's funny the things you remember. <laughs> now, I'm going to read you just the synopsis of this book before we get too deep into it. You can tell I'm excited to look at this one because this one a lot more about the mermaids. So it says, Beware a mermaid's wrath. The mermaid soup, that's her name, has sent a flood to Fairy Haven. 
water talent fairy Rani must bring soup a wand or the home tree and all the never fairies will be swept away. But wise Mother Dove isn't sure which is worse, a wand or a flood. Wand wishes, tantalizing wand wishes, are risky. The most innocent wish can cause untold trouble. And not even Mother Dove knows that wands have hearts and minds, kind hearts or cruel hearts sympathetic minds, or minds filled with spite and mischief. Rainy Tinkerbell and Rhi, queen of the Never Fairies, set out on a perilous quest for a wand, a journey that takes them across an ocean to the palace of the terrifying great wanted fairies. Many obstacles stand between the questers and success. Tink's disappearance a mermaid's magical song, and wand madness, and even Neverland itself. Meanwhile, the flood waters are rising. So a very mysterious ending to this synopsis. What's gonna happen? Lots of mermaids in this one. Even right from the beginning, mermaids. This mermaid's called Soup, and it's spelled S-O-O-P. Not like soup, like chicken noodle. I remember thinking that was funny the first time I read it. Little fairy here. I love books that have illustrations kind of dispersed. I really loved, as a kid, reading the Harry Potter books because at the beginning of every chapter, there would be a new tiny little illustration. I liked chapter books, but there's just something about books with pictures. They were so much fun to look at when your mom or dad read them to you. Now here are the great wanted fairies, and this is a beautiful double page illustration. I love all the swirls in the hair. I love the color I think it's probably very apparent that this was a huge inspiration to me when I was younger as far as painting goes because if you've seen any of my art I'm sure you can recognize tiny little influences that I would take from this. Things that you grew up with really do ultimately influence who you are as a person. Another dual page illustration, much darker than the one we were just looking at, but beautiful all the same. Just water, but so simple and beautiful even though it's just water. You really are drawn down and you want to know what's at the bottom. I love this one too. I love sea creatures. <laughs> probably why mermaids are my favorite. We have the fish and the sharks. The poor little fairy at the bottom with the wand trying to get away. And here we have all the fairies in a balloon that's flying away, searching. Another one of soup. I love the way her hair swirls around her and comes down around. You can really feel like there's water surrounding her, the way her hair swirls around her. <laughs> Clumsy teacher. <laughs> Lots of bats. Baby bats. Grown up bats. The lighting, the way the light hits the eyes, 
feels as though light is very dim and beautiful the way it highlights the bat's face. And then we have the fairy. And I love all this little cross hatching in the hair. So beautiful. <laughs> this one's kind of cute too. I think this would make a beautiful poster. A little mushroom cap and a tiny little fairy peeking out between it. And what fairy does this look like to you? Tinkerbell. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the ending too much for you, so I'll leave it at that. Like I said with the first book, this is a great book to share with a child or even to just read. Personally, even though I'm an adult, I collect a lot of children's books because I love the illustrations and they're so wonderful to look at. So beautiful to collect and have. So thank you for taking the time to look at these books with me. I hope to see you again soon and I hope that you have a great